Hello guys and welcome to this video to analyze some clinical cases to understand how to diagnose and treat gingival tissue alterations, okay? So a very important video about periodontology uh, and the first thing that you need to understand is what are the aspects of a healthy gingival tissue? So of course you guys can see this from the books. Healthy gingival aspects would be with, uh, of course, varying colors. The colors may vary from patient to patient, even levels of pigmentation. But several of the books will describe the color of a healthy gingival tissue as coral pink or salmon. Okay, so those are the colors described by several of the books. So it's a light color. Okay, that's the aspect of a healthy gingival tissue. Usually keratinized, so that's the ideal situation. Okay, a keratinized tissue firmly attached to the bone. Okay. So this would be the healthy aspects of a gingival tissue. And we know that when the tissue is inflamed, when we have gingival inflammation or gingivitis, then the tissue can get swollen, okay? And then more red, of course. So the color becomes darker, more red. And of course, we have bleeding on probing. We have bleeding, uh, the patient will report bleeding during the, the, the brushing and even flossing, okay? So those are aspects of inflammation. And uh, one tip here for you guys is that usually the patients will brush a little bit you know, worse in the posterior regions because maybe they are not reaching properly or you know, most of the patients that are not doing a very good oral hygiene, it's easier to focus on the anterior teeth, right? So pay attention on the posterior regions because in many cases we are going to see differences like this. So in this case here, we are seeing that between the lateral and the canine, for example, the gingival tissue looks healthy. So at least it looks with a reasonable level of keratinization. Okay, the, the orange peel aspect, that's the, the aspect of a healthy gingival tissue, right? So the orange peel aspect, this term is also described by the books as stippling. Okay, we can see here, but then when we go to the posterior regions, then you, you are seeing, you know, these this aspects of inflammation, and then a little bit of swollen areas, you know, and of course, this is gingival inflammation, okay? Now, when we have bone loss associated, then of course, the diagnosis is periodontitis because we are also losing the level of the alveolar crest bone, and then that's the marginal level uh, of the bone surrounding the tooth, right? So, as we can see in this OPG, this panoramic pregeograph, the three molars here have decreased levels of marginal bone, Okay, and that's of course due to this situation, right? So this would be classified already as periodontitis, and of course the patient is now needing to treat this, okay? But then we have also these staining areas, okay, on the crowns, and of course this will lead to enhanced uh, plaque index, okay? So take a look at, at the uh, left, the bottom left corner of this slide, telling you important variables, okay? So the gingival type, and there is now this recommended reference here for you guys to understand that gingival thickness is very important, that the, the width of the attached gingival tissue is very important as well. It can vary up to 10 millimeters, so uh, usually, but uh, there are variations, so it, it, I really recommend you guys to read this article, okay? Now, probing depth, uh, plaque index and bleeding index, so they are variables that we can assess in the clinic, they are used by research, of course, but they are actually uh, variables that we are assessing on our patients, okay, during the clinical intraoral examination. So don't forget that you guys will do a very nice physical extraoral examination, see uh, bilateral symmetry, palpation of lymph nodes and everything, and then you guys will proceed with a very nice intraoral examination, and then uh, probably you would like, when you see a situation like this, then you'd like um, radiographic examination to see the level of the bone, okay? Because we are already seeing gingival recession here, even with furcation exposure, okay? And then we need to decide whether or not, uh, so how to treat this teeth, right? We need to decide here. And of course, these levels are, of course, decreased, but we can try to keep these teeth. Of course, that's, uh, we need to, be, to try to be conservative. Uh, then that's, that's actually the solution for this case. So, uh, nice periodontal treatments, okay, uh, scaling, polishing, and, and ultrasound. And then uh, you guys are seeing that uh, the stainings were removed, so less plaque. Uh, and then, of course, you are going to do uh, uh, all the scaling and the periodontal treatment, okay, which is 
not exactly the purpose of video to give in details. Uh, first, we need to understand the aspects, so to diagnose and then to know the normal aspects. And then we are going to talk about in future videos about the treatment the, uh, steps. OK, so the, step, the steps of the treatment. All right, just for us to explore a little bit more this case, take a look at this. So the lower arch, we have a fixed bridge, okay? But take a look at the distal aspect of the molar of the fixed bridge, okay? So between the uh, second and the third molars, the lower arch I'm talking about, you guys are seeing that there is a vertical bone defect, okay? So uh, there is even now, this could be even classified as endoperial lesion, and then we need to understand the conditions of this root canal treatment. All right. There is even a, uh, on the other abutment of this fixed bridge, on the premolar, we are seeing a distal um, vertical bone defect as well. Okay, So below the pontic, there is a uh, bone defect, so a vertical bone defect associated to the premolar abutment. Okay, So very, very important as well. Uh, all right, uh, we are going to talk about this case on f uh, further videos as well. So let's move now to uh, the, another case which actually was solved in a, in a different way here, okay? So now take a look at this. We are seeing this situation, okay? So now we are seeing this uh, amalgam restorations and then again, go back to my videos of carriers of the ICDAS classification of types of carriers. I will add some links here on the top right corner of this screen. They will show, show up at some points. So you guys can click on these links to review the content about carries, okay? And then I hope you guys were able to realize this situation over here, okay, with the red circle. So, uh, of course, you guys will probe this, uh, will, you know, do the clinical examination to see the adaptation of this restoration, and then you have the shadows, then uh, this is a, you guys have a radiograph in, in which it's not clear that we are seeing uh, the recurrent carries, but that's occlusal recurrent caries. And of course, the clinical examination is the gold standard uh, examination now, right? So the ICDAS classification. And then take a look at the levels of the alveolar crest. Okay, so take a look at the levels of the bone here. So the, the second molar, for example, the bone insertion of this tooth is almost gone, right? So the bone uh, level is up to the the apical third of this root, okay? So only the apex is actually, you know, within bone support, you know, and the rest is actually, you know, everything was basically lost due to the uh, periodontitis and all, all these situations, right? But the patient came already, you know, trying to treat this, and then we now uh, the patient is also feeling pain to percussion, okay? Where there is this root canal treatment, of course, you guys could always take a CBCT when there is suspicion of fracture. Okay, I hope you guys uh, know this. We are going to add even the link of the CBCT videos here, even the video of the root fracture. Okay, uh, and then we need to take a decision here. So there is a risk of fracture. The uh, you know, and the, there is these levels of the um, uh, of alveolar uh, crest. So it was decided to extract and place an implant on the second molar, but then the first molar uh, as well was compromised after a period of time because the patient didn't come to the clinic and the patient waited too much to come back to the next appointment. So take a look what happened. Now we have this situation, okay? So now that's the situation. Uh, some, some pictures were taken using the mirror, so the, I'm talking about the right side of the patient, of course. But now take a look at this. We have a worsened condition okay, of the, the gingival tissue, so more inflamed, of course, more gingival recession, okay, and then uh, the restoration is broken now, right? You can see in both pictures, that's just the initial, the initial radiograph, just for you guys to compare. So we, the, the amalgam restoration uh, of the first molar, the distal aspect of this restoration is now broken. And of course, due to these carries that we had seen on the previous slides, and now we are seeing arrested carries below this restoration, okay, with a huge crown destruction, and this crown destruction was going down to the level of the gingival tissue. Okay, so what is the predictability to restore this crown now? Okay, uh, don't forget that we need to, to assess the, the tooth radiographically and clinically. 
And then uh, in a case like this, there is no bone support, even with mobility of the second molar now. And then, of course, the treatment would be to take a CBCT first to do implant planning. Okay, so don't forget to review our videos about implant planning as well. And then place two nice uh, dental implants. Okay, that's uh, those are strong dental implants to rehabilitate the patient. Of course, with the correct vertical dimension, with the correct principles of occlusion. I'm not showing to you, and we are not discussing about the antagonist arch now, but just for us to understand that this could not be just treated peri uh, with a periodontal treatment because the patient had mobility, the patient, is, the patient was a young patient that wanted to, you know, to have a nice occlusion, so the patient was also looking for this. It was part of the chief complaint of the patient, and that's very important. Don't forget to, to enhance your attention to the chief complaint of the patient, uh, even before you start your clinical examination, and then, if needed, radiographic examination as well, for you to plan your treatment properly. Okay, so if you guys liked this analysis, this video, please hit the like button. Don't forget to share our videos. This is very useful for our channel because we're trying to build this together and see you guys on the next videos.